good, yeah. I like what you said about <clears throat> how everybody has a story. Yeah. Know, is it really, everybody does have that story. Yeah. But, you know, it, yeah. It's great when you get a chance to share it with people and uh, especially something so personal. You know, it's you know it is. Um, and. Oh, we're just talking. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> One of the great things about telling me stories, it makes it makes people feel, I think I mentioned this, safe telling me their stories. And so when I was leaving the theater last night, we're going down the stairs, we're almost out, and I hear, Miss Walls, Miss Walls, somebody wants me to sign a book. Oh, okay. So I sit down and sign it. She tells me a story. I look up, and there's this long line of people, you know, so we stayed another hour and a half and they're all telling me their stories this is one of the reasons i love dallas so much people love storytelling you yeah know? absolutely yeah well and after seeing something like that i think it could give people the courage to share exactly. their own thing like exactly. maybe they were hesitant to exactly well, never yeah. people told me that they said you know i always thought my family was really screwed up but <laughs> i feel kind of safe with you because your family was even weirder you know? yeah <laughs> Are we good? We're good, yeah. Okay. All right, well, Jeanette, thank you, first of all, so much for coming to Dallas. It's great to have you here, and, and the film was wonderful, and uh, I, I, I can't say enough good things about it. The first thing I wanted to bring up is that it does seem like we're seeing kind of nowadays in an age in Hollywood where we're getting to see more female stories that we didn't often get to see. Like, I don't know if we could make this same movie in the 90s and have it be you know, something that we could share as widely as we could, and I think that's a, it's a great time for, for women's stories in Hollywood right now. Do you, do you feel that that's accurate? Absolutely, yeah. I do. And I think that with these phenomenal actors like Brie Larson, who yeah. just, you know, pops off the screen, she's such a, a, an interesting force, and I think we're, we're going to be seeing a lot more of her as well. Oh, absolutely, yeah. 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 How much did you guys get to collaborate and talk? We worked together a lot. The truth is, I don't think she needed that much guidance. <laughs> this is a smart lady. She really, she, she, saw, she saw things about myself that I don't see. Um, the questions were so smart. Things, the, these actors are really interested in physicality. And she said, you know, I've noticed you have really good posture. Most tall people don't. She wanted to discuss that. And it was like, wow, wow, that's just really smart. Um, and, you know, she emailed me or called me constantly about things she was thinking of, grappling with, but she was always right. Yeah. Um, um, she didn't want to get anything wrong. She was, she was really cognizant about not wanting to invade my privacy. I said, honey, my life is literally an open book. You, know, <laughs> you, you can go there. I trusted her. And that's the best kind of relationship. I didn't want to be second-guessing her or, or, or uh, saying, you know, well, let's, let's not do that. She knew what she was doing. She felt comfortable asking me if she was in the right direction, but she always was. Yeah. Now, it's one thing to write memories and, and to share that on the page, but yeah. when you see it played out on the big screen, was that personally kind of, uh, was it hard to it's see intense. it that way? Yeah. It was intense. It was pretty powerful, but the producer, when he showed it to me the first time, he said, you're not going to like it. He said, nobody <laughs> likes movies about themselves the first time they see it. I loved it. Yeah. It was weird. It was intense. It was beautiful because they got it right. And, you know, I so admire the director, who is also the, the co-screenwriter, um, because he so profoundly understood that love and pain and joy and uh, disappointment and exuberance and triumph can exist all within the same story, the same person even. Yeah. And he just really understood nothing is simple. Everything, it was a very nuanced, layered movie. And I was wondering, is he going to be able to capture the contradictory qualities of, of my life and my family? And I thought he nailed it. Was there one particular moment that you watched and thought like, oh my God, it feels like they had a camera and just shot that memory from me? Uh, pretty much everything. Pretty much everything in the film. <laughs> pretty much everything. There were a couple yeah. that really hit home. And now this is going to sound weird and trivial, but one time when Woody Harrelson is picking up the door to their squat, he just he just plucked it up and he had this this look in his eye of pride over this shabby little you know a hole in the wall house that they had. And I was like, God, every little detail. He just nailed it. There were so many times when he he looked fearful and happy and sad and needy at the same time. They just, gosh, these actors, how do they do it? And there was one moment looking at little Ella Anderson in the pool. She played what they call the middle Jeanette. Mm -hmm. and She's wonderful, by the way. Yeah, she's amazing. <laughs> phenomenal. <laughs> phenomenal. And I'm looking at her in the pool with her little bare shoulder clinging to the side of the pool because she's afraid to swim. And I just, I wanted to leap into the screen and just hug her and take care of her. Um, there were so many moments like that 
but I really couldn't, I couldn't single out one. I, I, I was a basket case watching it. I was crying, I was laughing, but I, I was feeling this emotional whiplash. But I think other people who didn't experience it, that, who didn't go through these things themselves were also experiencing that kind of emotional whiplash. And I think that's why it was brilliant because life is not all joy, but it's not all pain. Yeah. Well, and I think it's easy to get caught up and forget about how hard things can be. I mean, like you said something last night in the Q&A that I thought was wonderful. You said every day when I turn on the shower and hot water comes mm -hmm. out, it, it's to me, it's a miracle. Like, I can't even believe it's happening because you still have those memories. Uh, exactly. And that's when I, I think everything is a curse and a blessing. And it's entirely up to us which when we choose to focus on. And going without these things mm -hmm. has been a blessing for me And that I will never take anything for granted. Yeah. You know, I, I, I'm not going to stand here and pretend... I don't have issues. I will always have certain issues. I, I have food issues. First time my husband tried to eat up my plate, he almost lost his hand. I just like, I, I, and I don't enjoy food as much as most people do because it was just something fuel for the machine. But I, the, the luxuries that I have in life now are amazing. And I'm, I'm just, I'm so grateful. But there was a point in my life when, when I had everything that I thought I needed. I had a nice apartment. I had hot running water. I had flush toilets. I had food something was missing and it was my past it was connecting with my parents and who and what i really kind was. of that communal aspect yeah, yeah. and and just my humanity i put it yeah. in, in in storage for a while until i knew how to deal with it i didn't want to feel anything yeah. i was so afraid of being vulnerable and being hurt and being back at that that scary place and um you know you go around life protecting yourself and thinking i don't want to feel anything i know but then you cut yourself off from the better, the more positive emotions. Yeah, well, it's always that whole that trade off of, you know, yeah, you're you have this great life, but you're now you're by yourself, and you don't have these other people to kind of rely on and and have that communal aspect. And yeah, it's it is interesting to feel that way. It's like when you leave the home, yeah, you, you miss that family aspect of it. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. Um, what are like all of your your siblings and especially your mom? Uh, how do they feel about the film now that it's done and finished and? seen the finished product. You know, uh, my brother's been fabulous from day one. He's, he still hasn't seen it. He doesn't, he doesn't want to see it in front of people. He's kind of, kind of waiting a little bit. Um, my older sister was ambivalent about it being made into a film until she saw Destin's previous movie, Short Term 12. She called up my mom and she said, our story's in good hands. Um, my kid sister's great with it. Um, my mother was initially ambivalent about participating. And when she found out that Naomi Watts was both talented and gorgeous. <laughs> she signed on. And I, I was watching the trailer for the first time with her the other day. And she saw it, she said, he looks just like Rex. Woody Harrelson looks just like Rex. And he acts just like Rex too. And, and um, then she saw herself, she goes, Naomi Watts looks just like me. So she's thrilled about it. Yeah, that's good. It's, mm -hmm. it's good that they can enjoy the finished product because yeah. it could be a very hard thing. I, to, and to I think to... it will be. Yeah. I think that there's still some coming to terms. Brian, when he saw the trailer, he was a little bothered. He said, you know, he, he, he is such a nitpick, he's such a purist and a, and a true sort of like, I don't think that I was wearing that outfit on that day. I mean, that's the sort of, the, the, you know, he's, he's a cop and he, there's right and wrong. He's not, he doesn't live in the world of <laughs> Analytical. Grace. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's fantastic. It's a wonderful movie. Thank you, Jeanette. Thank you. It was wonderful you. to talk to you. Thank yeah. you. Likewise. Thank you.